Hello everybody, it's the Tech Tips here today showing you how to turn this very cheap, very amazing Raspberry Pi 2 into this Nintendo 64. Except mine will look a little bit more like this. That's right, we're going to get tricky and we're going to set up two controllers with RetroPie because that's what the Nintendo 64 is all about, multiplayer gaming. This video is going to follow on from my RetroPie beginner setup video, so make sure you do watch and follow that if you have yet to install RetroPie. Click on the screen to be taken there now. Before we start, I'm going to tell and show you a little bit about the two N64 emulators bundled with RetroPie and why we need them both. If we take our ROM copying USB drive, we will notice two N64 folder options. Each of these corresponds to a different N64 emulator in RetroPie. And for the purpose of this video, I'll refer to this one as LibRetro N64 and this one as MoopN64. If we put ROMs in each of these folders, those with a keen eye will notice we have two N64 menu options in the emulation station. Unfortunately, there is no way to tell which is which unless you know which ROMs are in which folder. So why do we have two emulators? In this case, options are good. Some games run better in one emulator or the other. On screen now you'll see a good example of this. Moopin64 gives us clean menus, but as soon as we load into a two-player game, our second player screen is blank. Libretro, on the other hand, loads two-player mode flawlessly, even if you have to navigate some crazy menus. I did a longer video on this comparison, so click through on the screen now to see that if you're interested. Before we start, here is a quick overview of what we're going to accomplish in this video, so feel free to click to the section you're most interested in, or keep watching now and we're going to get straight into it. First up, I'm going to show you a little trick to help you work out which emulator is which while we're getting comfortable with them. Plug your ROM transferring USB drive into your PC and open up Notepad. Now this is going to be a blank file so go straight to Save As, navigate to your ROMs folder and select your first N64 folder. Click on Save As Type and select All Files. Type your file name as 00.libretro.z64. The Z64 will make this file appear as a game at the top of our game lists so you can easily tell which menu option is which emulator. Now I'm simply going to take this file again, copy it into my N64 Moopin64 Plus folder and rename it 00.moopin.z64. While you're here, throw some ROMs into each of these folders so our two N64 menu options show up in Emulation Station. I'm using the same ROM set in each folder to start with and suggest you do this as well. Now let's jump over to our Pi, making sure to have your USB keyboard handy and take a look at setting up our second controller. I have here my Xbox 360 controller which has been previously set up and my DualShock 3 which I'll be connecting via USB today. For this initial setup I'm going to remove my Xbox 360 pad and connect only my DualShock 3. I'm also going to use a different USB port for this connection just in case. Jumping across the emulation station I'm using my keyboard to access the menu and selecting configure input to register the DualShock 3 with menu control. You may have to hold the center PS button for emulation station to detect your controller, but once it does pick it up, set it up like you did with your 360 pad. Next we'll register it for use as a retro arc controller so we can use it in other emulators as well. Press F4 on your keyboard to access the command line and then type cd space forward slash home slash pi slash retro pi dash setup just as you see on screen now. Press enter and then type sudo space dot slash retro pi underscore setup dot sh or lowercase. This menu should look familiar and you'll want to go down to option 3 setup then 317 register retro arc controller. Follow the prompts on screen just as you have done before and when complete go to cancel and then do a reboot just for good measure. While the Pi is rebooting, now is the time to connect your other controller to the Pi so we're ready for some multiplayer action. Now we are back in Emulation Station and it's time to configure our controls starting with LibRetro64. Find your N64 menu, make sure we're in the right emulator using our little trick and load into any game. Just a warning, this can be frustrating if you have two different styles of gamepads like me and it took me three or four tries to get it right. I think I found a good system for you guys to follow so be patient, take your time and hopefully you will configure it correct the first time. You can speed through if you have two identical game pads or you're only setting up one player. Now when your game loads you're going to see some yellow text at the bottom of your screen. Joypad port 0 is player 1 and port 1 is player 2. If you have identical controllers then it's going to be some trial and error process to determine which one has taken port 0. Now you want to hold your hotkey on your gamepad and press F1 on your keyboard to bring up the LibRetro menu. If you're having any trouble getting this F1 menu up, click on screen now to go to my previous video where we set up our hotkey. 
Once you're in, use your keyboard to navigate to Settings, Input Settings, Joypad Mapping, and get ready to set up your controller. You will notice your Emulation Station Select and Back button are reversed in this menu, so if you're having trouble moving through, that's why. I had a lot of freezing occurring at this point with my two different gamepads. If you're using two gamepads like me, watch carefully and do exactly as I do on the screen. Otherwise, simply go ahead and bind all your keys for each player. You can do this using the Bind All menu option for each user. Before rushing in, it's worth knowing that the Bind option does not ask you to assign N64 keys, but goes through a more generic gamepad layout. Refer to my cheat sheet on screen now to see what key binds where. You can see that a lot of keys found are not actually used by N64, so you can skip these when you ask to bind them with no worries. All that we have to do now is save this configuration, so move back to the main menu and go down to Save New Config. You will see a message saying where it is saved. Now we have to go and move and rename this file so the emulator loads it on the next run. Exit the emulator and press F4 to get to the console. Type the following command, pressing Tab as you need to assist with autocomplete, and then press Enter. Now every time we load LibRetro64, our controls should be working as we want them. And the only thing left to do now is set up our controls for Moopin64. Before we do this, I want to make sure you've run the Moopin64 emulator at least once with your controllers plugged in before we start. If you haven't done that, go do that now quickly. This will do some auto setup and allow us to make sure we configure the right settings in the configuration file. For this part of the tutorial, you're also going to record some button presses, so get a pen and paper handy, or something similar. This is what mine looked like before I started. First things first, we want to open the Moopin64 config to see what controllers it's picking up. Type what you see on screen and then use Ctrl plus W to find the text input. Looking on screen now you can see SDL joystick name equals Sony PlayStation 3 controller. I'm going to record this name on my notepad. Because I'm setting up two controllers, I'm also going to record the joystick name for player 2, which is Microsoft Xbox 360 pad. That's all we need in this file at the moment, so press Ctrl X to exit and let's work at our buttons. Back at the console, type JS test space slash dev slash input slash JS0. Remember, if 0 doesn't work, try JS1, 2, all the way up to 7. Or an alternative method is to type just JS and then spam the tab key a few times and it will list what options are available to you. JS test tells me I'm testing the Xbox 360 gamepad, so now I'm going to go through my list of N64 keys and determine which button is which. For the joysticks, I also take note of whether we have a positive or negative value for the assigned button. Go through this process for all your controls and be careful if you're setting up a DualShock 3. Due to its pressure sensitive buttons, there will be a lot of information displayed on the screen. If you have a keen eye, you'll see at the bottom that pressure sensitive buttons also have a digital on off state. And this is what you want to record. Once I've finished, this is what my page look like and we're ready to edit our config file. Type sudo space nano space forward slash opt forward slash retropy forward slash configs forward slash n64 forward slash input auto cfg.ini. Once in, you need to find the section that corresponds to your controller. For me, it's the Sony PlayStation 3 and the Microsoft Xbox 360 pad sections. You'll be searching for what you wrote down before when we browsed our Moopin64 config file. Follow the format of the file and replace the button numbers and axes with what you recorded earlier. When editing the D-pad, the numbers shown may not correspond with what you wrote down. I recommend not editing this for the time being and only coming back to modify it if you find it does not work. You can also assign your N64C button behavior to an axis of your joypad as shown here. Or assign an N64 button to two possible buttons on your gamepad, an axis and a button, two axes or so on. And that's shown right here. When you are ready to exit, use Ctrl plus X and press Y to save and enter to overwrite. Type emulation station to load back into our front end and test your keys. Hopefully everything works great and now we are done with our controller setup for both emulators. Let's look at video plugins, and just like we looked at how each emulator had different effects on games, I'm going to show you the difference between video plugins on the same emulator. Up top we have the Rice plugin, and down bottom the N64 plugin, both running on Moopin64. Now by changing and tweaking a video plugin, we've turned a game from completely unplayable to playable. And right now I'll show you how to switch plugins on each emulator so you can experiment yourself. In LibRetro64, load up a game and access the F1 menu like we did earlier. Go down to Options, select Core Options and then GFX Plugin. Use the left and right arrow keys and you can see we have a few to choose from, but unfortunately to test these we'll need to select it and then exit and restart our emulator. I recommend starting with the Rice and Glide64 plugins and experimenting from there. 
To change your video plugin on Moopin64, go to the terminal and type the following to bring up the Moopin64 config file. Once we are in, press Ctrl W to search and type in video. This will take you towards the end of the file where we will see the following. The option we're interested in is video plugin. Now there are two options bundled with RetroPie for use with Moopin, and those are the Rice plugin and the N64 plugin. Simply change the text to either of these and the chosen plugin will be loaded on launch of the emulator. While we're here, it's probably a good time to talk about tweaking. I prefer the Rice video plugin with Moopin64 and its many options it gives you to tinker with. You won't see these options straight away, like in my file now, but if you save your config file, load up the emulator and then come back and edit the configuration file again, they'll be here. I'm going to display some of my preferred options on screen, so copy these into your file and go test some games. This is how I got Yoshi's Story working and it also gets rid of the second player black screen on Mario Kart. To manually change our plugin on libretro64, type the following command in at the terminal. This will load this file and we are interested in the moopin64-gfx plugin option. On screen are the options for this setting. I recommend Rice as it is the fastest, but Glide64 and GLN64 are worth testing as well. So that is it. We've finished our beginner's guide to N64 and you should be able to comfortably play some games and experiment with the different settings from this point onwards. If you did like this video, I would appreciate it if you liked it and left a comment. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to my channel. We'll look at some more advanced setup in a future video, but until then, enjoy your new Nintendo 64.